All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation. CP the franchise here. Special edition of Knicks Fan TV. We are here in Las Vegas at NBA Summer League. Another Summer League here for us. And joining me today, my guys, man, we got special guests. We got the host of SNY TV and New York Post Sports. A number of shows, man, doing the damn thing. My guy Dexter Henry is in the building. And joining me in the middle is Mr. Everything for Knicks Film School, man. <laughs> Producer, host, everything. Andrew Claudio in the building. Fellas, how are we feeling, man? We're good, CP. Feeling yeah, good, CP. man. Dex, it's cool, good, it's to cool. Nice. good to see you, too. Good to see both of you. Yeah. Nice and cooling here. Letting this outside. So, yeah, it's good. Blazing heat out there, Blazing. man. Blazing. You ain't Blazing. kidding. You are not kidding, <laughs> CP. Yes. <laughs> Would you believe that there's now, like, a cold front going through? No. Right. Well, it was 117 last week. We're only at 105 that. today. Right. Right. It's a cool, a cool 105. Yeah. Cool yeah. 105. yeah. It's, it's oxymorons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been unreal, man. I had to hit the pool every morning before I came here just move. to... Yeah, just to get a little chill out in. So I was at the pool and I made my way over here. We got Knicks basketball going on right now. But listen, man, it's orange and blue skies all over the place for these oh, Knicks, yeah. man. Between the free agency decisions, guys want to take less money, making blockbuster trades. <laughs> it is a new day, man. I mean, just give me your thoughts overall on, on this Knicks offseason so far. Look, I, I gave some abbreviated thoughts at Knicks Film School because we're all kind of in different places at the yeah, moment. Yeah. But I can actually... You can relate to this very well because we've talked baseball in the past. Yeah. Being a Mets fan, I never got to root for a Derek Jeter. Mm. I never got to root for some of the great Yankees that are out there mm. yeah. that made you proud to be a fan yeah. of said teams. Like That's not to say there weren't some great Mets, mm. but what Jalen Brunson did with this taking the discount and the vibes with the Villanova, like trying to win with the power of friendship, even this campaign signing, which may just be because Mikel Bridges is boys with campaign. Right. I'm all for it. This is quite literally a family affair that they have created with this organization. And it's the most excited I've been to root for a group of guys, let alone a basketball team, maybe ever. It's really the best position this franchise has been in a long time. Like yep. I, can't, I can't remember it. You know, we've, we've gone through decade of, of mismanagement, bad coaches, and just it just was not working. But these guys have a plan, man, and yeah. they've been executing very well. Man. And to that point, like we, we've all read Chris Herring's book, yeah. Blood, in Blood in the Garden. Garden. There's so much incompetence throughout the 90s that just got blinded by winning. True, and I'm not true. saying there might not be stuff behind the scenes we don't see, Yeah, right. but this seems like the most well run. Like I couldn't imagine the book about this run. Now, obviously, let's let it get through a whole decade yeah, of yeah. success and we'll enjoy <laughs> true, the book true. but things just seem to be flowing so smoothly and I, like you said it's it's the best position this this franchise has been at least as long as i've been rooting for this team yeah no nah, it, it's i mean it's hard for me as long as you know i grew up a nick fan covering the team it's hard to think about this level of competence that's been sustained i understand mm -hmm. It is a very small sample size here i understand it but if you're a nick fan in my eyes you have to be excited about this and listen I'm walking on the street in New York City, and Jail the Jalen Brunson news comes out, guys. And I'm like, okay, we all kind of heard it. We thought yeah. he might take the discount. But, man, to see him do it and yeah. really show what he, he wants to win with this group. But I think the real thing for me is the trust, because that's the thing I hear this. It, taking the less, everybody's going to talk about the 113 left on the table. The trust that he's putting in this franchise, what he believes. Obviously, the relationships matter with his dad, Leon Rose, everything, his agent, all that ties in matters. But I think that sends a huge message. So now we're hearing Mikel Bridges will probably likely take less. There's been reports on that, right? I think this is a great place for the Knicks. The other thing you mentioned, the camaraderie, mm -hmm. the continuity. That's a word I'm big on in sports yeah, yeah. that I think sometimes people don't value as much, CP and Andrew. Continuity matters here with the Knicks. And there's no reason to think this team can't compete for a championship. Yeah, we're yeah. saying that. Championship, yeah, folks. We're saying yeah. this team can Big compete time. for a championship. Big time. Yeah. No other team in the NBA has this type of synergy between players and front office. It's literally a family. I mean, Jalen Pearls, Leon Rose, that's his godfather. Yeah. It's literally a family. So when you talk about that trust, yeah, they, they have that trust in each other. And look, Real quick, remember yeah. when that used to be a punching line? Yeah. Like yeah. the the, the – CAA, the whole nepotism CAA, thing was the gonna nepotism. drive them into Could the ground. People said it wouldn't work. Yeah, and the 130 work. million yeah. dollars. Yeah. No, now it's the calling card yeah. of the team, and it's the identity at this point. 100. percent And I saw Brock Oler yesterday at the game. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, and I just I had to dap him up. Like, bro, great job on what Got you've been doing, man. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And he turned around and told me, great job with KFTV. He said, hey, 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 I said, here we go. Another <laughs> member like of the CAA Mafia is tapped into KFTV, <laughs> man. But, but the thing that, that's really getting me with this team, and again, 
the banner has not been raised. There's still a lot of work to be done, and they still have to go out there and execute and win. But just think about where this team was when Leon Rose got here to where they are now. And while there's no perfect way to build a championship contender, a lot of teams had a certain formula, at least when it came to homegrown draft picks. The Celtics, the Warriors, Denver, on and on and on. Like, it typically starts with having that luck to get that franchise player in the draft. For the Knicks, their lottery picks never pan out. They've never panned out. Porzingis is gone. They mm -hmm. had to trade RJ and quick. They had to tr uh, let OB, OB walk. And so they've been able to assemble this team through luck, through signings, and through big trades, but still to be able to put a team together that's all in their prime and now taking less money to build it further. Uh, we haven't seen this before. I, yeah, I think the key thing in all that, though, CP, is they use the assets when you look at these players. Porzingis didn't yep. work out, right? Was an all-star, didn't work out. But you look at RJ, you look at Quickly, that turns in. You were in the building with me when that happened. Yeah, that yeah. turns into OG and Anobi. But the yeah. key thing for me is all these guys fit, right? It feels cohesive. And that tells you from the top that they understand what kind of team they want to build, yeah. how they want to play, how that fits the coach they have. And that's the key thing. There's many ways to team build. And I know that's the point you're yeah, getting to yeah. as well, too. It doesn't have to be just one way. Listen, did they hit a home run? Or if you want to call it a grand slam and free agency with Jalen Brunson, yeah, I'm going to call it a grand slam now because he's taking less money. Yeah. But the pieces that are here, is there, was there one that you're saying that doesn't fit? Even campaign. Yeah. You're out here. I'm not saying you're excited about campaign. But, <laughs> no, but, it's, but it's a thing. But you're like, yeah. listen, liking who you work with matters. True. Okay? True. Just want to say it to people, you guys who create great content around the Knicks, you love the people you work with, you got a great team, same for you, right? That matters. You guys have a synergy in what you want to do. I think these guys liking each other, these guys wanting to have a common goal, being connected with the front office, I think yeah. all that stuff matters, and I think it's a good example for the league and how you can team build differently. Now, obviously, guys, they got to win. Yeah. Gotta that win. matters. Gotta they got to win. But right now, how they've built this team, there's not that much yeah. you can complain about. And the, the biggest thing for me, because, yes, the end goal is a championship, and you, you have to – you eventually have to measure it in, mm -hmm. in titles because yeah. that, that gets rid of all the details. Mm -hmm. The reason that – and I, I think it's well documented how much of a Carmelo Anthony fan I can be yes. and how much yes. I defend Likewise. both Likewise. the trade. Yeah. We defend both the trade. Yeah. We go through the doldrums of that, that 2013 season that yeah. it wasn't a fluke. Yeah. But, like, you can objectively be like, they gave up a lot for Carmelo Anthony. True. It's just every move after that was also horrible. True. Yes. They gave up a lot for Mikael Bridges. Every move before and after, I have I've, obviously before I kind of I, I trust the organization and every move they've made leading up to it. Yeah. And I trust them going forward. So it's it's almost as if, yes, they have to win a title, but they have my trust that even when like a head scratcher like the campaign move, I'm still like, you know what? You've earned the benefit of the doubt. And that's not something I've had with this organization yeah. in my life watching this basketball yeah. team. Yeah, they. And the fact that they're all together, they're, they're all young, they're the synergy that you talked about, Dex, mm -hmm. man, they're going to have a, a bunch of shots at this. I, I really believe that. Yeah. Even like, prime, if This isn't bro. like a one- or two-year run. They, they're going to have a lot of cracks at yeah. the yeah. bites at the apple, as they sure. say. Sure. And that's, that's where the Jalen Brunson taking less matters because he allows them to have more bites at the apple yeah. because they can stay below that second apron. Yeah. That's, it's huge. It's I ha huge. I have to get on my Jeremy Cohen for a second because, yeah. like, uh -oh. The fact that their their MVP candidate is going to be making less than Emmanuel quickly this year, that's not yeah. even a shot at yeah. Emmanuel yeah. quickly. Yeah, no no shot, shot. It's shot just the symbolism quick. of he's going to be making 20 per, less than 20% of your salary cap, cap is such a such an advantage that you're going to be yeah. able to play with over the next four years. So, it's a tremendous yeah. sacrifice that many in the league would not do. Yeah. And so yeah. you, you got you to give him I mean, credit, man. CP, OG and Anobi didn't take OG less. Did I said not Hartenstein take less. didn't take yeah, less. Exactly. I don't fault anybody that takes the biggest offer possible. Yeah. But that just speaks to the level of, of favor that yeah. he did to this organization. And to your point, the trust, like he believes that this organization, this front office is going to be here yeah. in three years. Yeah, nobody and does you know that what? if they don't trust I do too, you know? Yeah. I, I can't, you know, I, I did a, uh, I, funnily enough, I did a Twitter search on my own name. Oh. On Twitter, right? Uh, and I put, I dangerous put, game? I put CP the franchise <laughs> and I put wings. And I looked, and I had tweets 
video pictures going all the way back to like 2021 where I'm just like, we need a wing, we need a wing, we need a wing, we don't have wings. And finally, we have two of the best defensive wing stoppers in the league. Yeah. Mikal Bridge is one of the guys. I, I went back to my draft reaction show, the 2018 draft, and I'm like, yo, they got Knox. What happened to Mikal Bridges? This is a national champion. He's sitting right that. there. Yeah. So now we got these two guys. That's what I can't wait to see, man. They're saying wing stop is the nickname. I don't know what you guys think. I like no, it. I haven't I even like heard it. that one yet. That's wing, great. wing stop is, yeah. is the wing stop. Good. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. like that. Wing stop looks good. I like that. But I think one of the things, of course, yes, their defensive prowess is, is going to be their calling card. But both of these guys have shown the ability to be able to mix it up and score, not just as spot-up shooters, not just in catch and two corner threes, but McCall can put it on the floor. He can operate in the mid-range. We saw OG. I was very impressed with OG in that Philly series with the way that he was able to operate. Yep. And so now you, you're going to have guys one through four for now that can create, that can put the ball on the floor, that can create for others. I like the way this offense is moving, man. I like the way this offense can look. It almost, and I think basketball fans will understand me when I say this. Yeah. This Nick team has a chance to be one of the more balanced teams that we've seen without a mega superstar, I'll say. Not saying the Jalen Brunson is yeah. a superstar, mega superstar since like the Detroit Pistons of 2004. Mm, they remind yeah. me a lot of that team in the way they're able to defend. They're versatile. One guy might be able to give you 30 one night, the other. I think we all know what we're going to get out of Brunson, yeah. but what Bridges can give you. As you said, what OG can, can give you. Yeah. And you should have seen how excited this man was when the OG trade was announced. Why? Because in that <laughs> show we're talking about, he's like, I want a wing. And now he's got wings. <laughs> it's Wingstop Central. It's Wingstop, right now, right? I believe there's yeah. a third person also from Big John, School that and also and made went very crazy. clear. Yeah. Uh, crazy. Happy with a couple was. words we had to bring yes. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but I just think it's the balance of this team that I like, right? And, and, yeah. and it's the depth that adding to that continuity. I think the other thing is everybody's going to know their role. Everybody is going to want to eat, but not to take away from people at the table. So this has helped Julius Randle. We saw how Julius Randle thrived a lot when OG came here. Now with Mikel here, if Julius Randle has an off night, you're like, man, Mikel can cook. Yeah. OG can cook as well. Brunson has an off night. You think those guys could pick him up. Right. That's the beauty and I think the fun of this team. I see you smiling already. You're I'm, envisioning. I'm giddy, you're thinking man. about I'm the playoffs. So giddy, but you should be excited. Yeah. You should. If, if you're a Knicks fan, you should be excited about this. Yeah. And here's the other thing, to your point, to get back, CP. You got wings that can match up with Boston. Now you got guys you can throw at Jalen Brown and, yeah. Jason, and Jason Tatum. You got guys you can throw them. You can throw somebody at Paul George. You can yeah, throw somebody yeah. at Tyrese Maxey. Giannis Middleton. Giannis and Middleton. Yeah, it's, it's no and longer Dame. like against those teams. It's no longer like, okay, we need a great night to beat this team. Like, right. yeah, we have different ways we can beat them. the Bucks have been a tough matchup for the Knicks, right, exactly. because of lack of size and lack of defensive acumen on the wing. But now you have that, and I think this is what should excite you. It's like whatever series you're going to, you, feel, you should feel pretty good. Well, I'm not saying you're going to yeah. win, but you should feel pretty good. You're hinting at it, Dexter. The most exciting thing for me, uh -huh. yes, we have two outstanding defensive wings that might have some mm -hmm. creation ability that may not have been tapped into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Bridges showed a little bit in Brooklyn, but mm -hmm. we, we have two. OG and Obi and Mikael Bridges are going to be elite through the story, right? Mm -hmm. We don't just have two wings. We have wings upon wings upon wings yeah. on this team. Maybe you want a wing that can rebound. Here comes yeah. Josh Hart yeah. and his, yeah, his uh, energizer bunny attitude. Yeah. If you want a wing that can shoot, here's Dante DiVincenzo, who has played a little bit of three, who played a little bit of two, like set the Knicks three-point record last year. Yeah. And they're your backups right, right. now. That, right. They, they have built such a deep roster. And all this to say, a guy that got inserted into the starting lineup that I'm very high on, the one – one of the two homegrown Knicks remaining, Deuce McBride, yeah. showed an ability, and this is why he's so important in my mind, to succeed next to Jalen Brunson. He's yeah. not just a backup. Like That's why the campaign move was a bit puzzling, because mm. he's actually in the perfect role campaign to come in, mm -hmm. play 15 minutes, just back up Brunson, give him a breather. Deuce can do that and play next to Brunson in right. certain lineups. Right. They're, they're, this team is so deep, has so many different looks they can throw at you. Yeah. And you bring up the Pistons. Yeah. Dare me to dream a little bigger because I've been down a basketball reference deep dive. Mm -hmm. And what team defined the 2010s in your mind? Both of you. I'll ask both of you. Spurs. What team? The Spurs. Spurs. There was one other Spurs. team. Spurs. One other team that won 73 Spurs. games. The Warriors. The Warriors. Warriors. Yeah. So the Warriors, for the majority of those first two years of Steve Kerr, before mm -hmm. they got KD and became an mm -hmm. unbeatable mm -hmm. team, right? 
for those first two years, he was starting Bogut at center. And then what became known over those first two, the 67-win the team that, lost, that won the finals and mm -hmm. the 73-win team that lost the finals, there was a death lineup that yeah. was created yeah. with Draymond, Draymond at, the, at five, the five and Iguodala and Harrison Barnes oh, and Clay Thompson. So I, I see your Warriors death lineup. Yeah. Granted, not, nobody has Steph Curry on the Knicks. Nobody mm -hmm. is Steph mm -hmm. Curry. But if OG Ananobi is your five and Randall is your four and Mikael Bridges is your three and DiVincenzo, DiVincenzo. is your two and Jalen Brunson is your one. And look, I understand who the head coach is, Tom yeah. Thibodeau, and how he may be in love with rim protection. Right. But I will note that the death lineup that we all thought the Warriors won with and, that, oh, my God, they played it all the time. Steve Kerr's a genius. It played 222 possessions that first year, 347 mm. the second. was their third most used lineup in both seasons, and he only pivoted to it as a starting five in game four of the finals mm. in 2015 right. after they fell down 2-1 to LeBron and the LeBronettes, like mm -hmm. Della Vadova mm -hmm. and that crew. Like, they have a death lineup that I think they'll, they have the potential to tap into, and it's, look, we heard Fred Katz reported Tibbs was looking into some Warriors film. That's why yeah. we saw a lot more ball movement, running a hub of the offense through Hartenstein. Yeah. I think we might see that lineup yeah. a lot this season. Tibbs and it might be something that they, that's right. I mean, right. specifically the ingenuity right. of the, the offensive adjustments. Yeah. He's always known yeah. as a defensive guy. That's, that's the word I was looking at, the ingenuity. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we give Tibbs enough credit. He's been willing to adjust and, yeah. and adjust to the, to the modern game. And so we got to give him that chance because as they continue to, to fortify this team with defenders, you may not be as compromised in the front court as you were in the past. You may now be able to take those type of risks with your lineup to mm -hmm. be able to go small. And against Boston, you're going to need to try that. And I know a lot of fans like to say, well, Boston's not the only team we need to play, play for. But for the Knicks to be able to have optionality, to be have to have right. those options where, yeah, we can go big, we can keep Mitch out there, or we have the option now to go small because we have savvy, capable defenders between OG and OG uh, Bridges, Hart. You know, you you can switch these guys all around. Well, look at. I think you were in the building for the CP. Remember game four against Philly in the first mm -hmm. round? Yeah, yeah, you were uh, there. Fantastic game in which Tibbs goes small in that game to close that exactly. game with Precious Sachua and OG Ananobi, right. who did a fantastic job guarding Joel Embiid. I understand it was a banged-up Joel Embiid, so yeah. I know fans will say that, but he's shown that. He's not been married to these lineups. I think the thing I would like to see, which kind of goes to a point mm -hmm. you're making this season, is does Tibbs – rely a little bit more in depth this year. I think the Knicks need to focus on playing 9, 10, maybe 11 deep. It's something we saw Indiana do at certain points in the season. Give guys like Kolek some minutes. Does mm. Pacom Dadia get some minutes so that guys aren't burnt out when it comes to the end of the season? That's yeah. the next adjustment I want to see with him. Yeah. But with lineups, I think he will. I think he will experiment with some of those smaller lineups, and you have to. You've got to give teams different looks. This is what the regular season for is for, excuse me, is to experiment on those things. And I think, I hope that's something that Knicks fans get to see this season. There's a nasty word that, well, two words that have been thrown around the, the NBA world. I know the NBA hates to talk about it, but load management load has management. come up. And while I don't want the Knicks to be taking games off, I did note that once Isaiah Hartenstein was put on a minutes limit, once Jalen Brunson was put on a minutes limit, Tibbs responded like, hey, I, I only have 30 minutes. I'm going to deploy those minutes as perfectly as possible. And you, you, th unfortunately, Josh Hart, okay, you're playing the whole game. Deuce McBride, okay, you're playing the whole game. Yeah. Now he has options. Like you said, he has Deuce McBride. He yep. has, you know, his backups were all starters last mm -hmm. year. You look mm -hmm. at the starting lineup for game, set, for game five and six yeah. against the Pacers, Deuce McBride, uh, Deuce McBride, DiVincenzo, and Josh Hart. They're all your backups, all backups. now. They all have the uh, experience playing heavy minutes. Ding, ding. They also now have experience playing backup minutes. Yeah. So they, I agree with you. It's something I hope they do, that they, they lean on their depth this year. And it's so. going to create different looks and different options for them to succeed. CP the franchise, Dexter Henry, Henry a a Andrew Claudio in the building. Knicks Fan TV, we are here uh, from Las Vegas Summer League. Right behind us uh, are the Knicks and Nets playing their Summer League game. We're going to talk about the Summer League team in a little bit. But with this campaign signing, a lot of the reactions I saw were, is this it for Deuce? Is this it? Is there another trade coming? I always expected them to go out there and get a veteran pack a point guard, despite Kolick looking like John Stockton out there in the first <laughs> summer league game. You know how we are. Yeah. So you know how we are with the overreactions. I still expect them to go out there and, and get a backup. 
I was told Burks, they wanted him back. I'm not just hyping up my guy, Big Money Burks. No, I, I was Burks told they wanted him, him back. <laughs> he took his talents to South Beach. And so I did think it could have been a Lowry, it could have been a campaign. They went out there to get Cam. I don't necessarily think this means Deuce is packing his bags, and I certainly hope not. Because based on what we saw from him last year, I thought he was tremendous for this team. Yeah, yeah he has his weaknesses. But if you put him off ball alongside another ball handler, he's going to be impactful for you and an efficient, impactful scorer. And he showed you more in the mid-range, showed you a little bit of playmaking capabilities, some toughness. I'd like to see Deuce here, but what, what do you make of the, uh, the pain signing as, as to what it means for the future? I think it's insurance for depth, and I don't think it's anything more than that, right? And, I, and you know, Ian Begley of SNY spoke a little bit about that, and he said there was, he saw, heard some of that and talked to people that said, hey, don't worry about Deuce. I can tell you, the organization loves Deuce. I don't think they want him to go anywhere. It's two things. It's, it's the improvement in his offensive game. Three things, actually. Improvement in his offensive game. He is on one of the best contracts in the NBA. Right. Right? And then also, the thing that has got him playing time over the years is his defensive prowess, right? You got a guard who can lock down. Another person you talked about, how you can throw on different people. In the, the Knicks, Tom Thibodeau's not giving him up. Mm -hmm. I don't see Deuce going unless it's a perfect deal to get a backup big man. I just don't see it. I think Campaign is clearly the third point guard here. I don't have full inside information on that, but I think that he is. And I still think you're going to see, but what the thing is, you can put him and Deuce in the backcourt. As you mentioned, Deuce can play off Brunson. He can play off Campaign. It also allows guys to not be worn out. So I like the move. Any depth you can get, to me, is a good thing. But I don't think Deuce is going anywhere unless it's to get a much improved backup big man, which we'll see if the Knicks are still in the market for. We'll the, see. the name Walker Kessler has been brought up a ton, yeah. and look, it's the unfortunate part about the NBA in 2024. Mm -hmm. We have to consider the second apron and yeah. the complications, that, well, the both aprons, and the mm -hmm. fact that Deuce being on the contract that he is, if he goes out and a Back a big man comes in and he's making more money. The Knicks are hard capped at the first apron and it mm -hmm. takes away their flexibility. Mm -hmm. Kessler's the name that has always stood out to me. That if Danny Ainge has a moment of weakness and decides that he doesn't want like all of the picks and mm -hmm. your firstborn and all the coupons that you <laughs> have in your wallet, like and he's willing to make a fair trade with you, yeah. then Deuce and whatever pick swaps or protected picks the Knicks have left could be a deal for Walker Kessler. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, I'll just echo everything Dexter said. I've, yeah. I'm very high on Deuce McBride as well. I don't think it's that big a deal that he's not a true point guard. I yeah. don't think the, tr the, the initiators yeah. in the second unit will be Mikael Bridges, Julius Randle, and Josh Hart Josh at Hart. times. Josh Hart, like, transition. Deuce, also, if you're talking like three possessions yeah. in the second unit, we'll that's not going to kill, we'll you, kill you, you know? Yeah. And nah. his... His shooting ability has always just been such a, an important, especially this year, him, him elevating to be a dependable tremendous, shooter. Tremendous. Look, I know that Halliburton took his lunch the last two games of yeah. the, the playoffs. Yeah. Halliburton, he, had a, he was an all-NBA player. Halliburton. Like he's allowed to, we're yeah, allowed to yeah. say he's a good basketball player. Yeah. I think that the thing that more stands out to me about Deuce McBride's playoff performance mm -hmm. The guy won them multiple playoff games. Oh, like you yeah. talk Big about shots. game one, Big you talk shots. about game four. Like yeah. this guy in the Philly series was Tremendous. essential. Big and if shots. they if they don't have a brain fart at the end of game five, he closes all four wins yeah. of that series. So. Look, Great I'm point. very high on Deuce McBride, and I look if the biggest lesson Knicks fans and maybe the Knicks in general learned last year, you cannot have Dang. enough healthy bodies Dang. in the building. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, you know? bro. And, and uh, absolutely. If Campaign's your 12th man, it's better than da well, right. like, just because Tibbs didn't trust Daquan Jeffries and Jacob Toppin and all of them. Yeah. Now you have a veteran that he'll actually go to. You Great know? point. And here's one thing I'll add to that too. Mm -hmm. With that being said, there may be teams looking at the deadline that might say, "Hey, we want a campaign. You need a backup guard." Mm -hmm. Now that somebody on expiring contract, mm -hmm. low contract, who you could sell. That's good value for the Knicks, and maybe he wants playing time. You might be able to flip that, I don't know, in the second-round pick, but the way this front office has operated competently, you're taking a player that has some value that another team might be able to use. So it's just kind of you're going to have that money free to spend. Yeah. Why not spend it on something that you might be able to flip it into later? And I think True. that's something to be noted, too. Yeah. Austin Rivers, they did that with him True. the first yep. year. The same, True. same True. similar thing happened. True. You know? True. They always like to give themselves options, man. That's options why I like how good, the man. Knicks move. I, yeah. I like how they're moving right now. Back up five. We'll see what happens. I have a hard time seeing us making a deal with Danny Ainge. Reports. Shams had a report out there in terms of Larry marketing trade value and reportedly Ainge wants the house 
He from, always from wants our the game house. From Golden State. He always does. So yeah. uh. is this another one where he's just kind of just putting it out there to see what type of offers he gets? Let's see what happens there. Uh, final comments. Nick Summer League. We got some promising young talents here. Uh, who are you interested in seeing in, the, in these final couple games? I'm really intrigued to see what Pacom Dadier does because I like that pick. We talked about him. I know you were like after they picked him. He's like, yeah. I don't know who he is. Um, we talked about him on the when we had Chris Percy yep. mm -hmm. on New York Got Game with me. We talked about him. I like his game. Very under control. Didn't shoot the ball that well in the first game, CP. Mm -hmm. how, does he, how does he impact the game if he's not shooting the ball well? And then where is he defensively? He's a longer-term project for the Knicks, but I like him as a wing. I think he's a really skilled player. What can Tyler Kolek do? Does he look like John Stockton out there more? Yeah. Do we need to pump the brakes? Let's really see on that. And I, did, I think the last is also Huck Purdy. I want to see what he does because yeah. a lot of the skills you're hearing about him is he's a decent passing big man. The Knicks need to kind of replace that skill set that they had with Isaiah Hartenstein. So how do these young players develop? Will any of them crack the rotation? I think Kolek probably is the best chance to do that. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. From a depth perspective, I think Kolek is the one that I have to say I'm interested in the most. The, yeah. Look, you couldn't have had a better summer league debut. True. Seven, 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 the Vegas stat line with no turnovers <laughs> yeah, yeah. as well. I never believed that he'd be, uh, he's in their plan A or B options for the rotation this year. That's just yeah. how this team has operated with rookies since that first year when Quickly and, and Obi cracked the rotation, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously Grimes did. They, we, we've spent all this time talking about their depth. I think yeah. Kolick ends up being a depth piece as well. Right. And look, I, Deuce isn't indispensable, but that contract being as attractive as it is, yeah. having a, a, I don't want to say a veteran, but Tyler Kolek did have, is like closer to the same age. age. Yeah, yeah so, like, same age. so as a result, he is more the most NBA ready of yeah. the rookies that they brought in. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm excited to see what he yeah. looks like. Obviously, we're we're not watching the Brooklyn game yet, so we yeah. have no idea we'll what he look. might be looking at, yeah. what he might be doing. Hopefully, he doesn't have seven turnovers. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, that <laughs> completely takes it. The triple seven, seven game yeah. in his debut, yeah. Yeah. man. I like the idea of Hot Forty too. We, we're yeah. all we're talking about what they're going to do for a backup yeah. big man, like I. Yeah. No disrespect to Jericho Sims. I don't think he's their plan A. Right. I don't think Hawk Forty's their plan A either. But look, they, they struck gold with one of the last four picks in the draft. Now they actually might strike gold with the last yeah. pick in the draft. You know, I'm excited we'll see. to see what they Let's turn see. him into. Hey, listen, I'll, I'll give him as much time in terms of Dottie. Give him as much time. We, they, we now we're building a wing factory. Yeah. We went from needing wings <laughs> to now we just turning them out. So Got the give wing him some factory. Time. Yeah. Uh, the CP doesn't even know what to do with himself uh, with all these know, wings. Man. He has no idea what to do with himself. Different flavors. First game, I said, <laughs> okay. Oh, you know, I didn't know about him in the draft, but I said the first game, I said, okay, I see the potential. Yeah. I see what they like in him because he's, he's got size. He's got a good frame, good wingspan, and he made some good passes out there. He's moving fairly well. Shot wasn't falling, but hey. We'll give him time. We got enough time to wait for him to come along. And if they believe in him, you know, they with Perrin and their scouts, let's give him a shot, man. Yeah. Let's give him a shot. So either way, gang, we're going to go get ready to tap into the Knicks versus Nets action here at Las Vegas Summer League. It's been a tremendous week so far. The Knicks fan TV, Knicks film school meetup uh, down at the Tilted Kilt was a tremendous, tremendous mm. occasion. Uh, another fantastic meetup by our community of fans and, and great time by all. So uh, we will tap in with you guys. Once again, like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you guys are following these guys at Knicks Film School, at SNY TV, New York Post Sports, CP the Franchise, Dexter Henry, Andrew Claudio. We are out of here. Until next time, see you guys.